Welcome to Conscious TV with Tom and Ramon. Uh, we've got a very special guest with us tonight, but uh, before we get to her, uh, we'll go over our couple little business spiel thingy majigger here. So, <laughs> boy, we are real professionals, aren't we, Ramon? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, anyways, uh, visit the website. We're working on that new paradigm page, and... Uh, uh, we're looking for input. Somebody send us, send us your ideas and uh, things you'd like to see on there. We've got some pretty good stuff going on there. The heirloom seeds and the, the earth homes and, and all sorts of good stuff. So uh, check it out. Uh, also, uh, we are now listed on the topparanormalsites.com. There's a link on the, the main page of our website, and uh, if you guys want to vote for us, uh, that would be awesome. We are currently, this is uh, a pre-recorded show. It's the 15th of February, but uh, right now we're hovering right around 70, so uh, give us a, your support there if you would. And uh, don't forget there's a donate tab there, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I hate doing that but anyway, so, blah, blah, blah. so anyways Ramon <laughs> there's that, that, that there's that professional broadcaster coming out in me right yeah <laughs> very professional okay so so who do we got tonight Ramon um our next guest I would say from listening to several interviews this person was very well tapped in Laura Magdalene Eisenhower is a soul reacher, reaching teacher and healer, recognized throughout the psychic and healer, and identified in Akash Akashic records and classified quantum access technologies. As a true archetype of Sophia Magdalena on Earth, she is also the great granddaughter of President Eisenhower, and since young has felt a profoundly strong calling to serve humanity and assist us in breaking free of false matrix and misuse of power that threatens our freedoms. Laura, welcome to our show. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me. So we want to first um, touch in on the whole Gaia Sophia um, mythology, if you want to call it that. Right. Okay. Okay. So... So, um, what what can you tell us about Gaia Sophia? And well, the plan uh huh. Go ahead. Yeah, the planetary body um, is basically like an organism. It has a consciousness. It's a being in a sense. Um, as far as the origins of this, uh, you know, the planetary body was 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 created, and um, the goddess Sophia morphed into the physical planet. And she's not just a being. She's not just a goddess. She's not just an ethereal being. She's also um, has taken, you know, physical incarnation. And, uh, you know, for, for her to morph into the physical planet is basically, in a sense, to protect us and to evolve with us um, in our activation um, in this shift time, you know, our, our multidimensional awareness um, and, and our, our true awakening to who we really are. And uh, so, in a sense, you know, we, we have been uh, dealing with an archonic force um, that has been running the planet. Um, some very dark energies, and they've been competing with the power of this planet, um, the creative will, you might say, the divine will uh, of this planetary body. So Sophia's role, um, and Gaia Sophia, is to, you know, reach out and, 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 and encourage connection and co-creation so that we are all participating in this global transformation and that we recognize that the planetary body is very similar to our own physical body. And if we can understand the laws of the physical body and the law that are similar to the, you know, the way the planet is, then we can really understand how to heal it and rid ourselves of this false power structure. So the, uh, the arcana, we, we interviewed uh, John Lamb last. Are you familiar with him? Yes. We uh, are friends. Oh, awesome. So uh, then you, you also, on you, uh, subscribe to the same theories of the uh, creation of the Archon and the Demiurge and stuff then? Yes, we have very similar understandings. And what's interesting is um, when I came across his website, it was very close to a lot that I've already written and understood. And he was one of the few that has really been able to pull it all together and understand it as far as E.T. Race's Archon and, you know, Sophia and the myths of Sophia and, you know, how she's 
you know, very much this planetary body as well. So what is your, what is your understanding of the Archon and, and who are they? Well, the Archons um, basically were birthed after there's a leak in the Pleroma. Um, this leak in the Pleroma um, was, a, was a portion of Sophia that had sort of went outside of the, the uh, you know, the, the consciousness and the, the creativity of, of the Godhead. And um, so when a portion of her leaked due to stirred up passions about understanding herself, it couldn't contain it and it created a bit of a disturbance. So when that aspect of her leaked on the outside, she wanted to go back in and longed to go back in um, to the Paroma, which is also another name for the heavens or basically the Godhead, the God Goddess. So um, in that longing and bewilderment and confusion of being on the outside, even though a huge portion of her was still on the inside, her, her feelings and emotions um, were very fertile because of, you know, basically the void, the primordial sea of chaos that pretty much birthed everything. And um, some of her feelings, you know, ended up creating a lower entity. And this lower entity um, was a, not really a, a part of her in an organic sort of birthing way that one would birth children. It was sort of an emanation of, of her confusion. And um, this is a part of the creator, though. This is a part of the consciousness of the creator that this leak happened. So there's, it's not really, you know, so much Sophia. It, it, it came really from the galactic core and the first aeon that emerged from that, which is the higher Sophia, Sophia Barbalo, which holds the masculine and the feminine and the Christ Sophia as an androgynous being. But that birthed the aeons of Christ Sophia. So the last aeon, the 13th aeon, which is also a part of Sophia, is the, is the portion that leaked or, or sort of split away. Um, and that's kind of what's created the lower and higher world. So this lower being formed and refused to acknowledge that it had a mother and somehow became very much um, jealous of anything that would be above it and wanted to have ultimate power. And Sophia really couldn't control it, you know, what it had become. And so what she did was she made sure that a, a, the spark of her, her, her consciousness and her light was in this being and in all souls that were birthed, you know, during this process. And that's sort of what humanity is. And in a sense, they look at this creator, God, this Demiurge, as the real, true God, and that's what the Bible sort of, you know, has done um, in certain stories. And, and so here we have sort of this punishing, jealous God, but that's not really the true God. And so it's cast a veil on a planetary body. And that's really what the Archons are. They're the forces um, that sort of emerge from the Demiurge, including Archangels and Archons. Archons being the more negative entities, the more negative races that are much more inorganic that are more based on thought forms and negative energies from this particular being. And what they end up doing is they affect our emotions, they affect our minds, and they manipulate um, by really wanting to have control so that we're serving this archonic system and that, you know, that, that we don't have our divine essence and we're not really empowered um, and in alignment with the primordial parents, the true creator God. And so this seven years, you know, basically casts a veil and keeps us from Sophia Christ. And the story of Christ is, is really about, you know, restoring this and bringing us really back to source. And so he, in his lifetime, advocated for the feminine and spoke much of Sophia. But these stories were rewritten because the archonic agenda is that we would not understand the mother. We would not come to understand the Gaia planet as Sophia and that we would be dealing with the patriarchal society and, you know, basically the creation of a slave race. So really, these times right now are about reconnecting and understanding what exists beyond these veils and who the true creator really is, which is basically all about love and that there's a spark within each of us to really embody this as well. Because we've inherited the same abilities and powers, in a sense, but in human form, to be um, in our God, goddess consciousness and to be um, way you know, beyond these veils and, and, and not controlled anymore, not subject to the powers of the global elite and the archonic system and the false cosmic cover-up that religion has, has cast. Right. So, so what would somebody do to, uh, is there, what's your best method for fending off the archonic uh, influences on your, on a person? Well, one has to understand that through media and technology, that's where we're very susceptible and the foods that we eat. And, uh, you know, we really just have to be strict about, you know, keeping ourselves clear, staying in clarity, understanding the truth. And just, you know, being determined to awaken to it. And, uh, you know, it's a very personal journey. A lot of times, you know, people are throwing information. And it's not about, you know, 
it's about really harnessing one's belief systems and really believing in oneself and one's divine power and abilities, taking care of the body, you know, detoxing from a lot of these different, uh, you know, foods that, that, that contain substances that are meant to dumb us down and really understanding that we're not in a system that is looking out for our well-being. It wishes to control us and it wishes us to be less than we are, convincing us that we need a savior or we need the assistance of these leaders to, to help us through when really they're the ones behind this cover-up. So we just really need to be empowered and understand who we really are. And once we remember that and really connect to the planetary body, Gaia, and understand Sophia and her presence amongst us, then you know we can start to awaken our organic nature and, and really become co-creative with the planetary forces that um, are much more powerful than the Archonic agenda. But, you know, we're dealing with technology now, we're dealing with mind control, we're dealing with all sorts of, you know, very strong forces that um, are working very, very hard at keeping us um, from being empowered. So we just have to be aggressive in our um, desires to not allow that to happen. And there's uh, all sorts of things that I can talk about later as far as things that we can do to, uh, you know, get things to the next level. Yeah, that that was one of the uh, things I wanted to ask you, but we can talk about that later. Um, do you want to go ahead and and talk a little bit about the whole Mars situation and and some of the things you've been through personally? Sure. Well, I grew up, you know, really being aware of my connection to Sophia and um, really what has happened to her on Earth as far as that energy being exiled, misunderstood, and kind of, I mean, a lot of people haven't even heard of Sophia, and she's an extremely important figure, and I just had a very strong connection to Magdalene, and just, just all these stories, and um, my, my astro chart is all Venus and Pluto, which is very much, you know, this, this sort of journey on Earth, and so uh, I was targeted, um, and I was identified through Quantum Access. One program, Project Pegasus, that uh, Andrew Bashago was a part of as a child, they identified me a year before I was born as being a strong leader in the truth movement. But then this covert Mars mission had identified me through looking glass technology as being a strong embodiment of the Sophia energy on Earth. And also because of my bloodline, they had chosen to uh, recruit me into a program to get me off this planet and onto Mars. And the way that they did that is by using a partner, somebody that they had identified with a person that I had a karma relationship with. And they somehow got to him before I was going to because I guess they knew that somehow we would organically meet. And so they... Um, had him under their control, really. And they sent him on a mission to find me and locate me and, and take me in. And I didn't know this until nine months into the relationship that he was actually sent to find me. We met in the normal way I felt or thought, and, and we just hit it off. And, and he had been talking about this Mars mission. And I didn't, I was pretty naive. I didn't see it in terms of the secret government. I didn't see it in terms of some ET agenda. And I didn't know that it connected to all these different technologies and, and you know, ET races and um, alternative three and, I just I didn't know how deep it was in, in, in as far as being a very serious thing um, and a very serious plan. Um, I just thought, you know, it might just be like, you know, eventually we're going to go to the stars, you know, as a humanity. And, and when I realized how much I had to keep it secret, when I realized how much paranoia and just intense energy was surrounding it, I, I really started to pay attention. And it really started to accelerate once we were really engaged. And I started to do research on the names of the people that he was dealing with. And I started to really, you know, see a lot of manipulation going on and how he was really under their control. And this mission didn't seem like it was to benefit anybody, uh, but, but maybe a few. And um, I didn't want to go anyway when it was offered to me, because no matter what happens to this planetary body, I've had a strong calling all my life to stay here on Earth and do my mission, do my work. Um, and it's very much tied into these mythologies and the sacred union and to um, global transformation. So it took me a lot to break, break free. Um, and I had some prophetic dreams that really helped me understand what I was dealing with. But it was all kind of done, you know, where I fell in love and then the partner's going to take me to Mars. And when I started to realize that this was a setup, even though we had the chemistry and the love to, to have a strong relationship, I realized that they were using him. But he thought he was doing good work. And I, I recognized that the group that he was dealing with are associated with these negative technologies, including artificial telepathy, my labs, you know, military abductions. Um, mind control, and psychotronic weapons. And I had been also targeted when I was younger. 